I'm going to get a lot of flack for posting this episode because it is not based around a simple strategy or a tactic. But in fact, this is the entire foundation of the conversation that I have with high level entrepreneurs, the public company CEOs that I mentor, the founders that we've invested in, because a lot of them have come through the ranks with the skill or the tactic that they say, oh, you know, I have this offer, I have this service, I have this product, and the market tells me I should get paid this much because that's what I offer. My offer contains all of these things and I offer this and I'm, I deserve more. And everything is based around a peri pursuit of, what you do and how you get paid for that. So you get paid for what you do. And I wanna offer you this idea that life gets significantly more enjoyable when you can just think, when you can just hope, when you can just design your life around getting paid for who you are. Uh, that's not foo-foo. I'm gonna walk you through that right now and I hopefully this little meditative state will create uh, more love, more energy and uh, change the very financial bloodline of your family. And it all starts right now. One thing is for certain, just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa, and welcome to Business School. In this episode, I'm going to break down something for you that is uh, probably one of the top lessons that I have learned that I share with the CEOs that I mentor. And... In fact, I share this message in a way in which most often people will fight me about it. Most often people will push back. Most often people will disagree. And once they get it, once they see it, uh, tremendous things start to happen in their lives. And that is understanding the leader you truly need to be. Now, this is not anything foo-foo got to do with like leadership or anything like that. That's not what this is all about. What this is about is your identity. And we are always, uh, we always work in congruence with our identity. If you believe that you are an athlete, you will do things like an athlete. If you believe that you are a good dad, you will do things that a good dad does. If you believe that you are uh, a social media influencer, you will do things that a social media influencer does. If you, you know, if you believe that you need to, that you are somebody, you will show up and be that person. That's just what our identities are all about. Now, here's the subtle but very interesting shift that I want to share with you. As we, um, as we progress in our careers, we're all not handed success, right? Like that does not happen. Uh, we have to prove and create success. And to do that, we have to do the work. And so what happens early on in our lives is that we spend our time thinking about what to do, what to do. And so we say, well, we have to wake up early. We have to plan. We have to work hard. We have to hire great people. We have to watch cash flow. We have to, we have to, we have to, we have to. It is all about what we do. And based on what we do, we start to, with the discipline around it, with a little luck, with a little support, we start to see success. And so what happens is, logically, what we do gets tied to who we are, right? So uh, if you're a Wall Street banker and you're putting in the long hours and you get success and you get, you close a bunch of deals. And so what you do was putting in the long hours and working really hard and that got you the success. So what you do becomes your identity. What you do influences who you are. And the problem is, is that this happens over and over and over again. And so I've seen people go from having a company of one to a company of 10 to a company of 50 to a company of 100 to a company of 500 to some of the public company CEOs that I mentor, two of them, uh, who actually have, you know, 10,000 plus employees, but they realize their identity is still, they don't realize this. I, I'm trying to work with them on this and I hope they're listening to this. Their identity is tied to what they used to do and not who they are today. 
right? And because of that, there's such a strong tie. And what am I trying to tell you? What I'm trying to tell you is as you do more, we have to realize what we do is not who we are. Okay. What we do is not who we are. What we do is what we do. Who we are is who we are. And the greatest joy, the greatest flex, the greatest scale in how you can deploy yourself in your life and in your business comes from deeply understanding who you are. And the fastest way to understand who you are is to understand why people love you, why your childhood friends love you, why your family loves you. Your family does not love you because you brought home a million dollars this month. No. They, yes, you, your family maybe appreciate that. My, I'm sure my mind does. But they love you way more. They appreciate you way more. Why? Why is it when we go connect with a childhood friend or a college classmate or a longtime friend, why is it that we are in a completely different emotional state? Why? That's because of who we are. We get to be who we are. And the interesting part about being who you are is that you have to be reminded of it. You have to co-create that memory over and over again. And so as we grow in our organizations, people will always ask me, well, Tron, what do I do with all my free time that you're forcing me to create? Yes, I'm forcing you to create this free time to separate you, to uh, disassociate you from realizing that what you do is not who you are. Who you are is who you are. And the more time we can spend in being who we are, the, the, the more we work in our, what Dan Sullivan calls our unique ability, that which is truly unique to us, right? So here is the tactical part of this. Here is the $10,000 shift that you'd like. The tactical part of this, of who you are, is asking the question as you grow in the organization, as you build your company, as you grow your business, as you advise your clients, is asking the question, which is, am I doing this activity because of what I do or am I doing this activity because of who I am? It's a tough question to answer, but I want you to answer that question. It is, am I doing this activity because of what I do or am I doing this activity because of who I am? Because I was, uh, I was talking to one of the CEOs that I mentor and, you know, and she was like, Hey, I got to write this memo. And I'm like, why? She's like, well, because that's what I've always done. I'm like, well, why do you write that memo? She's like, because I want to build culture. Well, why do you want to build culture? Well, because it, it makes me connected to the organization. Why is it make you connected to the organization? Because I believe that the, that, that, you know, the kindness of the organization, how I'm tied to it is what is propelling that organization. I'm like, yes, that's the answer. Is there a different way to showcase your kindness? Is there a different way to bring people together on your kindness? Do you have to always do it by the way you always did it before? No, right? If we can continuously infuse who we are into our daily lives, If you are kind, infuse your kindness. If you are strong, infuse your strength. If you are disciplined, infuse your discipline. Because sometimes we can very easily start to connect what we do to who we are. And if you have not done as much as you've wanted to do, you feel underconfident. If you've done a lot but not are not seeing a lot of success, you feel frustrated. And that's going to affect your identity. So when you start to do planning, when you start to figure out what the three, five, 10 most important things for you to do that day is, infuse it more with who you truly are. And the faster you can realize and be less foo-foo about who you truly are, the faster you will realize the ultimate flex. I can give you tactics till the cows come home, but if you're going to do stuff that is not congruent with who you are, you're just going to feel tired and resentful. And that's what happens to most people. They want the funnel. They want the double opt-in. They want the marketing strategy. They want three more leads. They want four more bundles. They want, you know, they want some kind of systematization here. They want to sell by this. They want to sell by chat. They want to sell by, um, they want, they want a sales team. They want a sales floor. They want to count their monthly recurring revenue. You can do all of that. You're so mired in what you do that you're forgetting who you are, right? And the tighter you can be with and con- more congruent you can be with your personality, You'll, you'll stop worrying about your cost per lead and start worrying about more than so much money in the bank that is going to overflow because people are attracted to people and people are attracted to people that are so comfortable in their own skin.
I'm going to ask you this question. What is one thing that you can do today that amplifies who you are? And then the, the, the deeper meditative states you can get on that, the more people will be drawn to you, the more people will be attracted to you, the more people will love you, the more people will just naturally buy from you because they're attracted to who you are. Hey, Sharon, I have a cool gift for you. I took some of my best ideas from the last 20 years and created a five-day MBA. It's quick and action-packed that you can listen to on the go, just like this podcast. And I want to give it to you for free, just as a thank you for listening to the show. No fluff, no gimmicks, just pure actionable ideas for you to use instantly. You can grab it right now at businessschoolshow.com. That's businessschoolshow.com. Dot com.